Now, the top and middle pretty much uh, share the same problem. Eh. Um, with, well, I mean, you know, they, it's not a problem. They, uh, they both have these roots that go all the way up to the top. So we'll basically use the same process, except these don't, the, on this particular hair, so you see it's not as layered, as jumbled, uh, as dense as the middle was. So it's a little bit easier to work with when selecting the area for the top of the head, which we want to keep separate and not get dynamics applied. All right, so there. That's nice and neat. I surprised myself. Uh, I see a couple spots, but anyway, uh, we can clean that up. Uh, invert. Geometry assignments. Stop that. Create surface. Dynamic top. And we say OK pinky. We hide the top. Uh, not too wonky. We could have selected less, actually. Um, but this is good. This works. Now, uh, too, since that part is not in the middle, it's kind of off to the side. You know, it kind of works. Okay. But... What we'll do, same thing again, uh, marquee selection, and just like level this pretty much as best we can at any rate. Um, selection mode, drag selection, just to kind of clean this up. That way, that way, that, 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 that. Here we go there, clickety, clickety, clack, clack, click and breathing great now geometry assignment we'll make this me create surface dynamic top crown say accept hide that top and now we have more level selection which looks a lot like the original base um, now what we can do here let's go ahead get these front left and right strips taken care of So right click, assignment, create from selection, dynamic, top, front, left. Top, front, left. And same thing with the other side. Uh, 
Let's do the straight up hair moves. And let's see. Geometry, great surface. Mumble. Dynamic. Top. Front. Right. Right. Yeah, dyslexia don't help with this, I tell you. Um, now, let's go ahead and get this middle strip out of here if we can. Selection mode, drag selection, add, 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 subtract, subtract. Okay. That, 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 and that. Then all this over here. Then. Yeah, this is one of those times where you have a strip that intersects with another one. So selecting becomes somewhat of a challenge because you select a polygon on one and it passes through to the other one and so you run back and forth and back and forth and back and forth like this trying to select the one without selecting the other but hey I do it All right. Geometry assignment, create surface from selected. Dynamic top back middle. Dynamic top back middle. Uh, okay. And look what we're left with. That left and right business again. All right. So let's right click. That's selection mode marquee. All right, right click, geometry assignment. It's the same thing over and over and over and over and over. Dynamic, top, back, left. Hide that. The rest of this, we just add back right and looky there yay all right so now that is everything that's the base that's the top that's the middle yeah uh about that the middle top yeah, you, you might want to keep these to right about the same because you don't want, see like this is the middle, this is below the top layer, which means there's going to be a few here that bounce against that top which will basically be static um, but we're not going to have the dynamics set that high that high up uh, so it shouldn't explode do want to make sure you make everything visible again There. 
Now go back to the universal tool. There. Now, um, now the reason we did not do the top and middle at the same time, even for the roots, is because it throws off the material assignments if we stick them in the same surface group. Uh, as long as you only applied the same texture to both layers, it would be fine, but if you wanted to assign multiple textures and colors, then there'd be a mismatch with the rest. Um, so, let's see. Check my notes, check my notes, check my notes. Uh, yeah. Uh, let's get the roots from here. So, here, so, so I want you to save. Save, 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 save. Cannot stress to you how important it is to save. Recording has started. Okay, so save, 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 save. So, yeah, you know how to save. I don't have to show you a video of that. Um, if I do, get off the computer. Um, 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 um. All right, so now we go back. Bring our figure back in. Uh, surface. Okay, now... Um, yeah, save this. Um, see what you can do. You save the hair once you've got it done. You save it as a scene and with you know all the dynamics and all the separations and all that good stuff. And then you just merge that into another scene. It says, Hey, I need this hair with the dynamics. I don't have to go through all this again. And you know, like I say, just merge it into an existing scene and say, you know, fit to whichever figure in the scene, run the simulation, boom, I'm done. Um, now, we are not done. Uh, all these new surfaces need materials, so go back to your texture shaded view, and you will notice that now you're, you have no textures on your hair. Um, so let's see, but that's easy enough to fix. So, right. Let's see. Yeah. Select if you did apply a texture before hair, 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 select that. Thank you. Now, this is actually not something I've experimented with. Let me see something. Dynamic base, default UV set, default UVs. What's this get? This is default UVs. Okay, so basically, uh, select, right click on base. And copy the material and everything that says dynamic base. See how naming them that way keeps them all together for your uh, shift select function. So paste to selected surfaces, kaboom. All right, and now we'll do the same for the middle. Copy the middle, whatever says middle, 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 middle. Middle, 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 middle. It's a lot for the middle. Paste. And then same for the top. Copy. Top, top, top. Top. Paste. And there is our R. Now, that was just the preparation. We have not yet applied D-Force to it. We will do that now. All right, so go to your simulation settings tab, go up to the little box in the corner, select add D-Force modifier dynamic surface. Make sure the hair is selected. I've added it to a figure before. It's not a pretty sight. So you add it to the hair. 
All right, uh, initialization. I prefer start bones for memorized pose off. Um, duration. You can do current frame. We'll just leave that as default for now. Okay. So let's go to your surfaces. Now you want to only select the original base, middle, skull cap, and top. Scroll all the way down, turn the dynamic strength to zero. Um, but you do want to set, all right, skull cap, you want to set your collision layers. This is the secret. All right. Um, yeah. So whatever's closest to the figure it's attached to, the body, whatever. Uh, that gets collision layer one. So skull caps, collision layer one. Now, the base layer was, and we will select all of the base, including the dynamic. We will set that collision layer two. The middle, well, let's see, middle, Middle and then control middle. That will be layer three. And then all this top, top, and top will be layer four. Collision layer four. Uh, self collide on, depending on the hair. Uh, and the results you're getting when you run the simulation, you might want to set that off. Um, there, you, you might want to set like the top layer off, the middle layer on. It just depends on what your results when you first run the simulation. Um, now, a couple of other important settings. Uh, so we'll select all the dynamic stuff. Um, now density, default 180, that's too thin for hair. Uh, that will cause these strips to twist and not in a good way. It'll look like some cheesy 2D hair thing. Um, so I usually run that at 20 and anything below that and it will explode, guarantee you. 19, explode. 19.9, it'll explode. 20, you're good. So, um, now one of the benefits, like I said before, of having these multiple divisions, especially around the head, is that you can keep, you can reduce the dynamics of those to keep the basic shape and style. Because if you just run the simulation, which we'll run the simulation now with just what we've got here, um, dynamic strength one, uh, density 20, you got your collision layers, got your collision offsets, everything else is default, uh, self collisions on. All right, so we'll run the simulation and See how it all just pulls straight down. You lose all the base shape and style that it had, and it's just straight, long, flat, hippie hair, which is okay if that's what you're going for. Um, but if you want it to maintain some of its original style, Uh, especially if it was kind of poofy around the head, you know, like, you know, for the lustrous hair, you, I mean, this is Elvira. Okay. You know, I mean, come on. And you know, you get that big, that kind of the beehive thing ish you can with this. It's not set for that, but still, uh, it falls like completely flat around the top of the head. Eh, 
So you can go back and select those Oops. Uh -huh. So, yeah, simulation settings. I want surfaces. Okay, that's what happened. Lustrous hair. All right. Uh, yeah. Going to be some editing on this. Um, but yeah, uh, so you can go back, pick these areas that were like the top crown, set the dynamic strength for say 0.8, and that will just make it kind of bounce without falling. Um, then I have a top crown. Uh, not that middle rim. We'll set that also. Dynamic strength of 0.8. Um, what was that? Middle crown. Dynamic strength 0.8. Uh, Base of the skull, we'll set that for 0.8. And let's see, didn't we have ears somewhere? Cheeks, we'll set that for about 0.9. Middle neck, back, yeah. Uh, we'll set that for 0.9. Thought we had an ear. Guess not. Do the cheeks. Okay. Um, and that will help it keep its uh, simulation settings. Run the simulation again. That will help it keep its base shape while somewhat while allowing the rest of the hair to do its dynamic thing and move freely. Uh, if you get too harsh with it, then it's like what's around the head will be a little more like a hair helmet and will not move, but then you'll have everything hanging off that, flying off in the breeze, and that will just look stupid. And I know stupid. All right, so we'll clear that. Um, I want to set this for play range. Uh, lights and cameras. Thank you very much. Give me the timeline here. I'll bump this up to 90 seconds. Or 90 frames, rather. Um, right. So I want to put this figure in a reclining or a, a pose where they would be smart content. Um, poses function. That would actually make better use of the poses by function laying. Thank you very much. Where you can get the full effect of the hair. Uh, this. We'll try that. All right. Now, create new primitive plane. Bunk. Because 
We don't want the hair to just fall through the floor. Now, morphs for the hair um, do work. Uh, let's see. Movement. So we want front, left, left. We want front, left, right to get it up off the floor. You see, it doesn't want to. Um, also, hair will stick to nipples. So you will want to move it off the chest. Front, forward, left. Front, forward, right. And also, you see how it's pinched under the arm. So, if we raise the arm, right, you want to make sure it's not pinched anywhere because it will merge, it, it will stick. Um, that's what causes explosions, especially in clothing, is uh, if, you know, the figure's in a pose where the arms are down and it's in the shirt or dress or whatever item comes up under their arm and is pinched between their arm and their body, their torso, that it has nowhere to go. And it, the only thing it can do is explode at that point. So even if you set your collision layers. Um, so now what we've got here, okay, you're still going to get some sticking to the floor. Uh, if any part of the hair is actually in the body of the figure, it will anchor to that point. Um, so that's another th another thing to look for. Uh, all right, so we've got her in this little reclining sideways pose. And... Select lustrous hair... Select, okay, it's selected. Simulation settings, that was not supposed to do that. Uh, third for third. Right. Okay, simulation settings. Oh, editor, that's what I'm looking for. Um, advanced, okay, right. Uh, animators use play range, the whole thing. So, simulate again. And voila. Now, the if you set it to run, uh, the simulation over the timeline play range, the more time you give it to do its thing, the more it's going to do its thing. Um, you can set it for a three minute at some point it's going to stop on its own um three minutes is overkill i've got it set for 90 frames and 30 frames per second eh, you know but i mean this is and this is you know going pretty quick here you know this is maybe a minute and a half that it's going to take to run this simulation across 90 frames and with all these almost 30 uh, surface subdivisions, granted, they've all got this, most of them's got the same dynamic setting, so it's just a, a blanket approach. But see how it kind of bunches up on the floor. Now you, you look at the back and how it fell across the back. Uh, then we can run the animation and watch it move. Um, it does look like it's sticking in the chest while it's running, but you stop and you see it's fixed. Uh, same. Why? Hey, 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 how about that? <coughs> same across the uh, back. Er 
run to the end, run to the hills, run to the end. Um, but yeah, uh, now, if you're actually using a clothed figure, um, you might want to your, let's see, whatever's closest to the body, whether it's clothes or hair, is always going to be collision layer one, and then it goes up from there. So, say if this figure was wearing a bikini, then the bikini, top and bottom, one piece, whatever, is going to be, and it was dynamic, it was, would be collision layer one. Uh, since I've already got collision layer one specified for a section of hair, I would have to move up. Well, let's see. Skull cap was collision layer one. All right. So say I've got a figure wearing undergarments, something over that, and something over that. So underwear, shirt, skirt, jacket. Okay. So the underwear collision layer one, if it's dynamic, if it's not, you don't have to worry about it. Um, shirt over that would be, if it has dynamics, you would want that collision layer two anyway, because by default, the undergarments would be collision layer one. You can set it to zero, eh. Um, but then any hair that landed on top of that would have to be one layer up. So you've got a shirt and a skirt, a blouse and a skirt, whatever, that are both collision layer two. Uh, as long as they're not coming in contact with each other. But anything that the hair comes in contact with gets one more collision layer higher. Uh, also, let's see. Let's see, check my notes. Um, blah, 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 blah. Okay, dynamic strength. Uh, stuck inside. Uh, animating dynamic hair. I have not done much animating in Dash Studio. Uh, just did a few simple things where you know, switch, switch, uh, switching between different poses and eh not like full you know regular animations there's like a, a walk animation that i have and you know and the hair does okay with that but as far as like you know running jumping any sort of action type stuff i haven't done any of that so i couldn't tell you how well this is going to work with the hair with the dynamics um that's up to you i mean this will get you started um, anyway, uh, I have not worked with uh, damping and whatnot for the simulation settings. Uh, it, you know, like I said, because I just have not done a whole lot more than basically what you see here. Um, buckling ratio and yada yada. I haven't done much with that. Friction. Eh, done a little, but not much. Uh, mostly it was the collision layers and dynamic strength because see you can set this whole thing eight and well let's go back here clear the simulation and then watch it just bounce And that's all it will do. Which, like I said, that could be a good thing. Maybe you like it, maybe you don't. Uh, you do get this one thing that pops out over her face, and I don't know why. Even though that's set to the same. I don't know, anyway. Um, but there you have it. The full, boring two-hour... Could have gone into a four hour tutorial of applying D force 
to hair. Um, the, at least the techniques that I use that I've had success with and success defined as I'm happy with it. Uh, it could be better, could be worse. I've seen it worse. Um, but it's some improvement. And you didn't have to play around with weight maps and calculate vertex weights. How about that, huh? All right. Peace out.